Hi, my name is Felipe Silva and uh, I am a research scientist working for the uh, Observatory on Social Media at the Indiana University. And today I'm going to talk about um, um, our work on exploring in a quantitative way uh, rhythmic patterns in poetry and prose uh, using machine learning techniques. <laughs> So let me start talking about myself. So I, as I mentioned, I'm a research scientist and um, uh, I have been working in several topics, but basically often are related to data analysis using networks, visualization and machine learning. And um, among the systems that we study are like biological systems, political systems, knowledge, the knowledge, knowledge acquisition problem, uh, representation of artistic works, uh, climate and science of science. And uh, through my career, I have been work uh, I worked on several softwares to visualize data, and also we have uh, several publications in um, in, in these uh, topics. However, today we are going to talk about uh, methods that uh, comp that we can use computationally to uh, understand poetry and uh, prose. And uh, uh, okay, so basically. Um, we are interested in mostly now in conventional poetry, which is also known as structured poetry or formal poetry, at least in English language. And um, these um, these types of texts are characterized by uh, or, or by rhyme and rhythm. So this is heavily emphasized in this type of texts. Um, of course, there is also imagery and uh, brevity and emotions associated to that. We are currently uh, not going to um, drive into this, but uh, 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 the, the idea is to focus on rhymes and uh, rhythm. And uh, prose, on the other hand, and freeform poetry may or may not uh, have some emphasis on these uh, two elements. And um, we want to uh, basically have um, teach, in some sense, the computer uh, to be able to identify and represent these characters. We need a way to model these characters in, in uh, using computational uh, resources. And this is kind of driven by other, um, uh, by, uh, other papers in the past, for instance, uh, papers in which uh, that already use it, try to classify poetry into different uh, groups. Um, uh, or analysis of historical chains uh, of poetry and prose over time, or like uh, uh, how they they change. But uh, uh, and uh, um, <clears throat> also uh, uh, other uh, analysis. In all of this case, this um, uh, computational resource, computational tools were used to uh, understand uh, these uh, data sets, these uh, 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 texts. So uh, in this work, we are interested more on uh, these uh, research questions. Um, and basically, we can start with the, um, what would be the best way or what, what or, or I would say like, uh, what would be a way to uh, teach the computers or uh, algorithms or uh, techniques to represent and recognize rhythmic and rhyme patterns in poetry uh, in prose. Uh, another question uh, that comes from this is um, if these tools that we end up developing, uh, if they can really quantify and analyze uh, poetry and prose and what kind of patterns we get. And finally, um, we want to um, see if there is insights that emerge naturally from these uh, data sets and from these uh, tools, the use of these tools in, in in the in patterns that we found. Um, <clears throat> so let's start first with with um, uh, so, so the first thing that we need to have is basically a way to represent the um, the rhymes, rhythm uh, in text. And one way that we can start doing that is. Uh, uh, using a phonetic representation for the text. So of course we don't have um, we uh, don't have the real like uh, the real pronunciation, the real kind of uh, fl flow of uh, someone 
uh, reading the text. Uh, this could potentially be an interesting project to, to, to do in future, but uh, we are going to approximate that by just using a phonetic representation de uh, de derived from uh, a phonetic dictionary, basically. So um, this can be done using this, uh, ph this uh, phonetic representation, the ARPA bet, um, which uses this uh, pronouncing dictionary um, uh, that's implemented in, in a package. And basically it converts any type of text into a phonetic representation. So um, now that you have a way to convert text documents, I would say, uh, to, uh, 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 um, to, to a series of phonemes, um, for the phonetic representation, we may want to also represent the rhythm. So um, suppose that we have a document there and uh, we it got it, the, the, the sequence of the phonemes, phonemes and uh, the, the, the next part, the next uh, step is basically uh, creating a time series that uh, uh, encode this, uh, <coughs> this um, uh, patterns over across uh, over the flow across the flow of the 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 the, the, the sample text. So in this example, uh, and is just showcasing that we can convert this to uh, a phonetic representation first. So the documents are converted to a phonetic representation, and after that, each different uh, uh, phoneme can be mapped as a single point over time in this, uh, across, along the text, I would say, uh, in this representation. And this is how we are going to start. Um, you can see that uh, some of uh, the phonemes have like a more space than the others. This is caused by punctu punctuation. Okay, so punctuation may have, gap, may lead to gaps. I'm going to explain this in, uh, in the next slide. Um, but basically you have the sequence of uh, uh, phonemes um, uh, displaced into a um, uh, time series. Okay, so here is, um, so this is uh, how we can approach um, capturing the rhythmic patterns of rhymes. So um, Instead of focusing, uh, in, instead of looking at all the phoneme, phonemes in the in the text, we f we are more interested on the uh, on rhymes. So basically, all the uh, uh, endings of uh, the the words, phonetic ends, uh, phonemes at the end of the the words, are used to mark uh, positions of potential rhymes. And um, by doing that, we can then mark them over uh, across the, the, the flow of the text. And you can see, for instance, so here, okay, so here again, we have a, 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 a piece of text that was converted to um, phonetic representation. And this phonetic representation, just, just the, the potential rhymes are shown here. And um, uh, now you you have like a kind of a representation of rhymes, but then we need to incorporate the rhythmic to that, and the rhythmic is should be based on basically the distances between uh, repetitions of the same uh, the same phoneme, right? So uh, to do that, we are uh, basically we we are interested on uh, establishing some kind of a window in which we take measurements out of this. So for instance, let's start from a window of size two. It should contains and it, it should contains at least two uh, uh, phonemes. So just like in this case. And wh what we want to measure is uh, uh, what's the distance uh, across across the, the time or the flow of the text that this uh, uh, phoneme that the rhymes have in this. So for instance, in this case, the blue ones are the only ones that are included that may have rhymes here in this uh, window. 
and uh, they are uh, they have some distance here and the punctuation have different unit units of time so they count differently um, <clears throat> may count each each type of punctuation symbol uh, may count differently um, okay so now the idea is that we want to create kind of windows that con that are good representations of their uh, of a, a rhythmic pattern and uh, how we do that we basically look for windows windows that uh, contain um, rhymes that are at a similar distance to each other one way that we can address this is using a uh, uh, coefficient of, of uh, variation of the intervals between the rhymes. So for instance, in this particular case, we have, uh, we expanded the window a little bit and we got three, uh, <clears throat> three intervals uh, corresponding to the intervals between uh, the phoneme, phoneme in blue. Uh, you can clearly see that the, there is no other repetition here, so the other phonemes doesn't participate. If, you, if you, we uh, let a, a, a parameter which is a threshold, so we call this delta, uh, being used to, to it is being used to select the window size. So if it's if the coefficient of variation of these intervals is uh, low is small, meaning that, that they are all kind of similar, uh, we keep increasing this uh, window. Uh, up to the point in which we don't see that. For for instance, in this case, we have we still have the distances among the blue, but now we included a a phoneme uh, the 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 orange phoneme here, which it has a, like a huge distance uh, among um, in, in internal distance here, meaning that uh, this value will be higher than here. And consequently, it it will be um, potentially it could be potentially higher than uh, delta. In this case, it was. So we finish the window here. So we close the window here, and uh, we repeat the process again up to filling the entire text, except that we discard the last uh, window because it can be regarded as incomplete. Um, we may we can rethink this uh, how to handle the. Uh, last window, but this is just what the way that we um, can avoid some problems. So, um, of course, you can go to the paper or you can uh, ask me later if you want to uh, know more details about this procedure. But uh, the idea is that this each window now kind of uh, uh, includes uh, encodes uh, rhythmic patterns that are present in this text, <clears throat> and that from, from this. From this uh, uh, windows, we can then uh, uh, get several measure measurements, uh, to which, which we call features. And basically, we can, for instance, get uh, the average of the time intervals the inside then, or the uh, the coefficient of variation of the time uh, of these time intervals. I mean, sorry, these are the total time of the window, and the difference between consecutive windows. Uh, the standard deviation for that, and uh, we could use having even other statistics, but here we stop it here, and we start combining this with products of this, just to have some variability and more uh, non-linear kind of uh, 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 interactions between these features. Um, <clears throat> for, to test this approach, we choose a data set coming from uh, uh, Project Gutenberg, and uh, it's basically uh, 60 samples of poems and 60 samples of prose. Um, and by doing that, we get, uh, so one idea that, so we have the features, right? So um, first thing that we can do is basically uh, try to see if we can distinguish between prose and uh, 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 poetry. And uh, we were able to get uh, uh, reasonable scores for that. So it means that uh, with like a, a, a eight out of ten, it kind of makes the 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 the, the correct choice. Um, and we for that we used several. We tried several classifiers. We did uh, this uh, like a, a classification task. Um, 
And the interesting thing is that this is comparable to a full text analysis. So uh, it means, so, but in our case, we just use rhythm and uh, rhymes. So this is interesting that uh, these are kind of, of like, it is this what we expect in some sense, but uh, uh, we can now do this computationally. Uh, we can represent and the thing, this kind of uh, showcase that your representation is capturing uh, something related to, to, to to, well, it's it's capturing uh, important information to distinguish poetry and prose. Of course, prose can also have some um, rhythmic and uh, 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 and rhymes, but uh, this is more, as I mentioned, more uh, uh, em em emphasized in uh, poetry. Okay, so uh, other results that we got are, I think that they are uh, interesting. Um, uh, because they say something more about uh, each of the samples that we use. And uh, the, um, the idea here is that we can build a network out of all the samples, meaning that we, we, for each piece of text, we, it became, each piece of text becomes a node in this network. And if they have similar features, similar uh, uh, rhythmic uh, and rhyme uh, features, they are going to be connected. And uh, we can establish different kind of thresholds for this connection. It doesn't matter much, but uh, uh, you can see that, uh, so in, in orange, you see the network, uh, oh, sorry, the nodes uh, for prose, and uh, uh, the blue ones are for poetry. And that, that's interesting because you can see, so a prose are all connected, meaning they are all very similar in terms of rhythmic and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, rhymes, but uh, poetry on the other hand is kind of always scattered. There, there is no sim like they, they are not. Uh, uh, you cannot you cannot find like a super uh, like a strong similarity between them. Meaning that they have their own characteristics sometimes. And uh, we could say that it's they are more, the patterns are more diverse in that. So this kind of a review something more about this data, and we can even pinpoint later like some of these uh, uh, nodes that are kind of uh, uh, different from that are prose, but are different from poetry has been has having some elements of poetry on it. Um, Another thing that we can do with this kind of framework, and this is just uh, another example, we can use it at this phonetic kind of representation to us uh, approach uh, 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 song lyrics. Uh, in this case, uh, we kind of construct, we, we do the same thing. We convert this to a phonetic representation, and each piece of uh, or word or or piece of uh, uh, yeah, basically. Uh, set of uh, phonemes uh, can be converted to a node in a network and we connect them if they are similar. Meaning that this network also captures somehow the rhythmic patterns in this, uh, uh, from this uh, song lyrics. And inter inter the interesting thing is that uh, we can see, uh, if we visualize these networks, we can see several interesting patterns. So these are all different music song, song lyrics and uh, you can see that they have a rich structure. And the idea is that um, we would be able to identify, for instance, the type of music, gender, uh, genre, or uh, uh, other information, or maybe, maybe even the, uh, the, uh, uh, the age of this uh, um, uh, song. So um, we try to do that. We still need to do uh, some further analysis. But we found that uh, this is you can interpret as a map of uh, features that we extracted from these networks, and uh, they kind of activate different regions depending on the gender genre. Um, and uh, we it's it's kind of for instance hip hop occupies like a small portion of this uh, space, a very specific portion, while others are kind of more broad or uh, activate uh, specific regions. Um, just to finalize, I like to talk a little bit about the future. So um, we, we now, uh, we now you, you, 
you all know that uh, uh, there's an emergence of uh, 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 large language models that uh, can do lots of stuff and analyze complicated uh, uh, text uh, content. And uh, I have we have tried to uh, to check like what kind of uh, insights, uh, for instance, ChatGPT and Llama two can provide to us, uh, in, in, uh, and if they can be used for uh, understanding um, uh, rhythmic patterns. And here are some of the results. So you can see um, uh, a poem, and it identified correctly the type and uh, the the rhythmic scheme. Um, we can also ask it to create a new one. And we can put it back to the system and it's going to, uh, uh, it's correctly analyze it uh, in, in the same fashion as the one that's well known. So this is super interesting and this can change a lot the way that uh, uh, people interact with uh, and uh, explore this type of uh, uh, problems. Uh, so thanks so much and uh, you can check out our paper for more info and details.